Fairview's coffee has mysteriously gone missing. Mayhem ensues when strange, coffee-craving zombies plague the city. Detective Mickey Potatoes, an overworked public servant, uncovers why ordinary citizens are losing their minds and how to stop the coffee apocalypse. But it involves the Mafia. And when you're dealing with Mafia crime families, nothing is ever easy. The Mafia controls everything in the city, including the police, including him. If he breaks the Mafia, they will break him. So, the city is without coffee. The city is burning before his very eyes, but he's powerless. Detective Potatoes has the power to stop the coffee apocalypse, but if he does, he could lose everything. find a way to better advertise Apothic Press. Just back it up, man. Whoa, Crom, what are you doing here? What's this? The Madness Roku Network. Sponsorship. One month of playing your 30 second ad on the network three times a day? Oh my gosh, for $20? And you can't beat that. Just back it already. All right, all right, Crom, I'm doing it. Awesome. Hi, I'm Tanner Hurley, founder of Apothic Press. I back the madness Roku Network, and so should you. Hello, how are you? Tired, as per usual, but you know, I, good I life. heard, I heard. What about three hours of sleep? Um, well, I've been up since four a.m. So, give it another half an hour. It'd be twenty. Well, in fact, yeah, it's twenty hours now. So, oh yeah, I'm God. not doing bad. Wow, wow, dude! All out delivering comics, huh? Out, yeah, yeah, never <laughs> stopping, never stopping. I know. I know sure. you're close. You're really close. Yeah, we're gonna yeah I know. It's the. It, uh, to be fair, it's been. Um, it could have been better done on my part, but uh, life's been a bit of a nightmare over the previous months because we're having a build done at the back of the house, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, our disabled mother-in-law is moving in with us. So I'm. Oh wow! Uh, I start a new job on Tuesday, but. Um, I've been up Tuesday to Saturday for the past best part of this year. 4 a.m. starts out uh, delivering kitchens to people. So, wow, dude! But 
a bit of manual labor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you what do you uh, what are you starting for for the new job? Uh, it's medical deliveries, uh, medications, things like that to people in uh, hospitals and in okay. house and stuff like that. Um, and also, we're trying to. There's a lot of things that are going to stem off hopefully from this uh, because I, I've done mixed martial arts since I was well, I've done martial arts since I was two. Mixed martial arts over the sort of like the last thirty plus years. Really? And, uh, I want to go. I want to go back into teaching kids with the uh, you know learning difficulties, not just mixed martial arts, but with the artwork as well. Wow. Um, I found my favorite niche was Kyokushin, and um, that hardcore. was when I was twenty. Yeah, it's hardcore. Wow. It, the the guy that coaches me is this lovely Iranian gentleman, um, and he he briefly and you know rather bruisingly taught Dolph Lundgren for a short while, <laughs> and uh, he's a former national champion and he he knows all the some of the greats. He even got a life membership from the the gentleman that started Kyokushin before he passed away from uh, tuberculosis. So yeah. wow, that was dude. You, had, must uh, be, you must be made out of freaking oak. At this point, doing it for that long? Uh, well, um, not next week, but the week after it's my birthday, so I'm officially forty-five. Uh, my I'm wife 47. trains. I'm forty-seven. I'm forty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. My my wife trains with me. She will be. Don't tell anybody I said this, but she'll be fifty-one next year. Okay. And All right. She, Between she's... you and me and the three people who are watching. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one will know. No, 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 no. But I say she's. Um, She's into it. We've we've got, well, sorry. I inherited horses, which were hers. So there's a lot of lot of life goes around with us, and a, a lovely little boy that's eight years old and suffers from ADHD. So he's constantly on the go. Oh he's, yeah, um, yeah. He's brilliant. He's a little light of my life. So. <laughs> and you're launching a comic. I I, I can't yep. I can't even imagine how I my God that's so much. I'm tired just listening to your life. Yeah, well, That's it, a lot, the dude. thing is, I, I started this in like 2003. Mm -hmm. um, just, I go over this story every single time. I can remember sitting there watching Reign of Fire, you know, with the dragons and Christian I Bale. I love that movie. That is a hidden gem. Yeah, it, do you know what? I wish that had done sort of like a TV series from like yeah. when he was a kid and working through. Um, I also wish they'd do a Predator film and uh, had the guy from, uh, what was it, uh, Last Samurai, the one that always kept kept having a go at Tom Cruise. Yeah. I forgot his name. He's superb. You know, the Predator takes on him. But Feudal Japan with the Samurais, that would, that'd be, that would great. be a film. In Japan, that'd, be, that'd film. be amazing. But if you want to be a realist, you've got to do it all in subtitles. That would drive it, people crazy. It would, yeah, it wouldn't work. It would never work. It would never work. Oh come on! I, I watch Akira with subtitles for God's sake, because the voice actually, hope is terrible. They, they actually said that uh, the Wolverine was yeah. because it was in Japan had one of the most. It was had a ton of subtitles for yeah. an American comic book movie. Mm. Yeah, that was a good one. The, the director's cut was good. The reg, the regular cut wasn't that great. I keep finding that with a lot of the director's cuts, that the films make a hell of a lot more sense. Batman versus Superman did. Way more, more sense. Control. Way more yeah. sense. Even the Justice League. I mean, for me, it was just like a better version of a bad movie, but it was still better. Um, it, it's it's still too dark for me. Zack Snyder yeah. has a thing with head trauma. I don't know what his problem is, but if you look at Batman, Superman, and look at Justice League, there's like, I think three to four instances of people bashing the back of their head. And it's like it's like it's a it's a weird thing with him. I don't get it. But um, so you have you had now your your book is called Twenty One Demons, right? Yes. Okay, Twenty One Demons: The Rise. Yes. So is this your first? Is this your first uh, kind of step into the self publishing? It, it is into the well, kind of into the self publishing because uh, I originally tried to get this out. Uh, I think it was two thousand and seven at New York Comic Con, um, and shortly after that, Mark Silvestri took a quick interest at Talk oh, nice. Out, and then I ended up pitching it to him at San Diego in two thousand and eight. And in all honesty, I'll, I'll admit it, I, I was a bit, you know, I had a bit of an ego. I thought I was, I was the next David Finch and all that type of jazz. Yeah, um, I've been Mark, through that, buddy. Yep, yeah, Mark lovingly destroyed me. 
in 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've been through that. I've been, I had uh, Graham Nolan give me some uh, helpful tips, we'll say. And, and Graham Nolan doesn't hold back. He was very nice, but my ego didn't like it back when I was 20. No. You know what I mean? And no, I no, no. What, Graham Nolan was a thousand percent right. Yeah. They, they do it. I, I, I even got to sit in front of uh, Neil Adams and um, Neil, uh, again, like Mark Sylvester, uh, lovingly destroyed me and then built me back up quite quickly. Good. Good. Um, it, it was a, a wonderful gentleman was Neil. And the, the thing is, I met him when my wife was pregnant with my little boy, Colton, and it was at London Supercom. And he looked at me, he says, you're looking for advice, aren't you? Because I was holding my portfolio and my, my other half was obviously stood there, big belly and everything like that. And he went, do you want to sit down? He offered his chair to my wife. And she's like, no, if I sit down, I'll never get back up. <laughs> so, you know, bit, bit of a bit of a tete-a-tete -tete going back. We had a, a slight, um, shall we say, difference of opinion over what's the best way to kill a zombie. And he says, he, a cult python, he says, you always cock it back and you're the brain goes everywhere. I says, yep. Yeah. But I say a sword because you never have to reload a sword. Yeah. And I would say, okay, so how about this? What if, okay, are we talking about the slow zombies or the really fast ones? Because that might make a difference. Even though a sword, I, I agree, you don't have to reload it. But those yeah. wily zombies, those crazy ones, those are tough. Yeah. You've, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've been in the ring with some uh, like skinny dudes that just start flailing around all crazy. Those guys are a pain in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> to, to be totally honest, it's it's usually the ones that look like they're about eighty years old that they're most the most dangerous because they've had that much experience. You know, the ones that come in, they've got many wrinkles. They look like a sharp puppy. Yeah, you know. Yeah. How old is he? Are you sure he's going to be able to do anything? He looks like he's going to have a heart attack, and then you're peeling a, a limb out of another orifice, going, "Maybe I got that wrong." <laughs> So, yeah, I've been I've been humbled on many an occasion by older people. I've also uh, been around professional boxers, um, BJJ uh, grapplers, and stuff like that. I I got a good kicking up and down with my martial arts for many a year, and I you know I've, <laughs> if you're going to get knocked out, you're going to get knocked out. It doesn't matter whether it's your 88 year old grandma or it's the guy that's built like you know Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, you're gonna get knocked yeah. out. So just just accept the fact it's a learning curve. You shouldn't have put your head there, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? yeah, it's the one you don't see coming every time. Yeah, it is. It is every time, man, because you you're just not ready for it. Oh, um. So tell us tell us about your book. Give us the other the first. Give us the elevator pitch, and then go into de whatever details you want to go into from there, bud. The elevator pitch is literally the uh, the prophecy that was hidden from mankind about the twenty one demons. Um. So this is this is all about poetic license when you get into the, the number of it. It's, you know, the, the line in the Bible where Lucifer said it's better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven. It was cut off there. So nobody knew about this prophecy because he turned around and said, I will bring your favorite per, uh, creation man back to you and they shall deny you thus undoing all your making. And he fell to hell and literally defiled hell, took it over. I worked on the principle of the seven sins and with the witching prowess of three times three. So if you get three demons, seven sins, that give you 21 demons and it creates you seven spheres of hell. To which there's a, a bit more backstory, which means this gateway, the demon gate nexus, um, is forged by the devils, uh, by Lucifer, adding these demonic souls into it so that it can basically triangulate every single pinpoint in the universe omniverse reality whatever it is time backwards forwards even to the gateways of hell or heaven so this is where you've got to find the 21 demons you open it up and say i want to go to heaven and off you pop it's the easiest way of putting it and wow. uh, it, it's it grew in story literally as i was going through it because i, I thought i'd done a, a really nice drawing of like my main character Guy, the one that's got the blue flames coming off of him yeah. um and the, he was the combination of what would a guy be like if i wanted to make him look like a dragon and i'd been through you know like rain of fire was on that was where that idea came from but yeah. i i watched a lot of guyver devil man um oh, yeah. demon city 
uh, Fist of the North Star. That that was, I like my anime, but I like the detailed artwork because I was a huge McFarlane fan due to the Hulk. And yep. Um, yep. same me with too, Dale. Man. Me too. Same with Dale Keown. Oh, as soon as he got unbelievable. He's he's um, he's incredible. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just a lot of people have shaped me, in, including Michael Turner and Mark Silvestri and stuff like that. And you've got the same. The so you've got the same taste as me. Yeah, we have the exact same taste. I'm a big, a big image guy. Um, yeah. I, I, all my favorite Marvel artists when I was in high school, they're the ones that went to Image. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, yeah, we have very much the same taste. Thank you, Pops, for the the campaign being put across the bottom that's awesome is that thank you sorry uh no it's uh yeah he did he got affected by a lot of them and, and when it started to get to the stage of the story started to evolve and get bigger pieces to it i mean my my little guy there feckle on the uh, on the t-shirt um he's kind of a nod to lemmy you know he's he's well read he's been around since the dawn of time with like lucifer and the other first creation angels he's He's like the fourth one, but he's a. I always had him sort of sat there. Uh, have you watched the film Snatch? Oh yeah, he's, yeah. You remember Brick Top? Absolutely. The, the, the guy, yeah, he's he's sort of like that that smart ass Cockney, you know. But he knows okay, that. He's, he's, Dude, he's, me and my friend used to just walk around quoting Brick Top all the time. We fucking loved him. Do you yeah. know what Nemesis means? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I absolutely. <laughs> That's like it's funny because that's like my one of my favorite accents too, like, yeah. like the UK that whole area, all the different accents that you guys have, you know, over there, it's yeah. all my favorite accent. I absolutely love it. So yeah, it's uh, I, I just these quirky little characters seem to just come to light, and I have um I have an affinity and a lot of love for the old horror films, older horror films like the the, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, not the more updates. Oh yeah, one, although... oh, I, I know, I know which one, dude. I came in. I want to say hi to Keely. Thanks for showing up. Um, hey. the original Nightmare on Elm Street, like the second one. I think the second one is terrifying, and the second one gets no praise whatsoever. No, the I don't. Two, the first two, I I can't even watch anymore. I really can't. It it will. Oh, it, it's too it's too creepy for me at this point. Well, that, that, that's the thing, though. Those, if you look at them, when they were put together, like the howling, when you look at them, they were just way ahead of the time. Yeah, way way ahead of the time. It looks cheesy when you peel it to pieces now, you know, but they were just that good for their era. They worked. The, the original Omen films when they first came out as well. Oh yeah. And, uh, I think it there's won't... something to that era, like the late 70s and, and, and early 80s. I think there's something about literally just the quality of the film that gives it like a creepy aspect to it. Like there's, I think, I think those are more terrifying than most things that I see today, given all yeah. the special effects, all the, the digital, all, nope, go back to the grainy film and it's just, it makes it even worse. Well, uh, there's two films which which specifically hit me um, for for like horror genre. Uh, there is a third, but obviously that's because I, I like Lemmy a lot, and that was Hellraiser. And you know, he's, he, he, I, I love me me Motorhead and and everything. My little boy does as well. He's great. Really? Um, yeah, he's, he's he's into exactly the same music of me as he's myself <laughs> and his mother. Disturbed, Motorhead, ACDC. Um, nice. The original. He's learning to play guitar, and he's just say he's just turned eight. And uh, last year, the music teacher asked him if there was a specific uh, piece of music he'd like to learn, and he said David Bowie's Starman. He went, "Can we try something a little bit easier?" <laughs> yeah. So he he then said, "Can we do Hellraiser by Motorhead?" Can we think of something easier? And yeah. then Col Colton just went, "He says, can we do ACDC Thunderstruck?" And they were like, "You're not really getting this easy thing, are you?" You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, can we can we do you know wheels on the bus or something? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was gonna say it's gonna start with a nursery rhyme. But I say that getting back to the two type of horror films that that, that really hit me were, that worked was the thing. Yeah. Simply because of the music and the way it was put together, and one which my wife actually introduced me to, and it was the entity. 
Do I don't know if I know that one. Barbara Hershey in it. Wow, I don't know if I know. I don't think I know that one. What's that one about? Uh, basically, it's a, there is a, a demonic spirit within the house that she's living in, and it, it's it, it attacks her, it rapes her, it attacks her in the the car and stuff like that. But what works with it so well is the way the music brings up the pace of the film. Yeah. If if you get chance, it's just the entity. It's Barbara Hershey in it. I can't remember the rest of the actors, but um, yeah, Trish says, "Oh, watch, you know, watch this now." Start to watch it. All oh, right, yeah, oh, brilliant. And it's it's the music again and the way it was put together. My Even wife the, loves horror movies. Like maybe, she loves like the 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 demon type demon yeah. ghost horror movies. And between me and her, I mean, together we've like. We've watched everything that we think is good, and now we're just like kind of waiting for new stuff to come out, hoping it's good. It's so the entity where we have to check that one out. Yeah, well, we've just uh, watched that Exorcist Believer. Is that the new one? The newest one. That got that got bad reviews. Was that bad? It's, was that... it's the pace. It's the pace of it. It takes too long to get into it, and it seems rushed towards the end of it. You know, when, right. when the, the, it's, it's sort of like, you know, um, they do try and do too much work in the in the final scenes. Yeah, they're yeah. Gonna pace it, build it. It, it's, it. it might have been better if they'd have done it over like a streaming thing. You know, like when Stranger Things started out, the first two episodes, it was like, <sighs> well, I'll try a third, and then you get yeah. to the third, it's like, okay, right, I need to stay with this. It's that's how it needs to be. But in a film, you've got roughly two hours, and if you spend like the first forty-five minutes of it just rolling through it that's when it starts to you sort of you know, I'll turn it off you know we can watch something else yeah uh, yes we have watched I have watched The Boogeyman and so has my wife that wasn't bad that so it's just it quite, wasn't bad I, I, I was, was like, like <laughs> hi <laughs> I was um, we were seeing like these underlying messages in that whole movie it was it was yeah. really good it was really good. I thought it was really well written, really well mm. filmed. Yeah, I'll say we, we we watched quite a few things. We quite like the Insidious uh, films. Oh, yeah. They they were pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We like the uh, uh, not not the Annabelle films, but that whole that like, yeah the Conjuring. The, yeah, yeah. We like the Conjuring yes. films a lot. I think the second Conjuring was one of the best because it was that one where they, they did about the where they're over in England. And it was that was where the nun first came into it, if you know what yes, I mean. Yes, 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 yes. Again, if it's good writing and it can, you can take your time with it as long as you've got the, it, you know, like the Chekhov's guns pay off. Yeah. Which yeah. is what I've tried to learn over the course of doing this graphic novel, giving enough bits of information for people to want to go back and read something. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I am under no illusion that people are going to pick fault with this straight away. It's the first graphic novel I've got to do. This is this is my learning curve. Yeah. My artwork has constantly improved over it, I hope. Well, I'd like to think it has. Did you do the um, art as well? Yeah. Oh no shit. Wow. I thought you I thought you were just a writer creator. No, I'm I write, I do all the artwork. I'm doing that the lettering is, as well. That's great. That's great. Excellent. So it's uh, it's it's hundred and twenty pages of me, you know, tears yeah. and all. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's another thing, and the the, um, uh, the the thing about this is my my wife's into the comics. She does a lot of cosplaying. She wants to actually play the uh, cosplay the the vampire queen in it, which is oh nice, um, excellent. We've got a couple of people that are going to help her get the outfit because uh, yeah. this is sort of like the launch, and then we're going to try and get the general release for March, so you can get it from the the publisher that's going to help us, which is Marcosia, and just push okay. it from there, so so you can get it on Amazon. Because it's this is the exclusive one. You get all the special prints. You can get the artwork. You can get other things like that. These are to to sort of draw people in, so that when it goes on general release, they're gonna go and get it. They're yeah. gonna start nudging the comic shops, and it'll it's it's that type of thing. Um, and as I say with the writing, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to write for me, but as I say, there's it's not a horror horror thing. It's a uh, kind of a a mythical adventure across sort of time 
and heaven and hell and stuff like that. And there's mm. plenty of sarcasm in it because I've watched way too much Monty Python and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So, hence how why Feckle... The, how do you pronounce the queen's uh, the queen vampire's name? It's Elium Setwe. Wow. Got that, babe? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay. Yeah, I wanted to figure that one out. That's um. That's a that's a that, that's a beautifully pronounced name. I like that. My mother was a French teacher, so I got to pick up one or two bits and pieces from that. But excellent, there's, excellent. Again, I've looked through a lot of different myths and history and stuff like that, like the Egyptian gods and the Norse gods, the you know, like uh, Sumerian, other things like that. But I've made them choirs of angels, which makes it a lot easier to put a line quite through everything. And you can bring a lot of things in on it. You know, like dragons are a choir of angels. Elves are a choir of angels. They're just different creations that God decided to, you know, oh, I'll try now. You know, I'll try this. Mm -hmm. But um, as I say, we, we'd like Fekel. He, he was like the fourth creation of God. He's become the eternal omniverse janitor. He sits there, you know, bottle of whiskey, a couple of fags and stuff like that. And he's, he's, he's a smart ass. You know, when people start turning around and, and chipping away at him, like we, I call them as a bit of a joke because my aunt came out with this one God botherers, people that really f try to force religion upon you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's that type of thing. I, I have my own beliefs. Everybody mm -hmm. does. My, my mm -hmm. Sampai is from Iran and he's a, a, what was it? A Muslim, Buddhist, Christian. Wow, and I went. I went. That's, hang on a minute. How do, that covers all the bases. And, yeah. yeah, I says, how how does that work? He says, I keep God in my heart and in my head, and the rest of the idiots can go blow themselves up. And I was like, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, that <laughs> makes, no, yeah it works. <laughs> that's that's awesome. But he's he's the type of person that would sit there and argue with him when he's in human form because I've made the ideal of you know they have to assume a human form to come down to earth and God and. Lucifer and him would be sort of sat playing cards and somebody would chirp in. But Feckle's the type of guy that would wind them up and turn around and dispel a lot of, uh, you know, religious beliefs and try to add in, you know, how do you think does this happen? How does this? And then people would be like, you need God in your life. He says, you sat over there having a cup of coffee with me. What do you think I've got? You know, that type <laughs> of thing. The smart ass reply and these people yeah. are thinking, yeah. silly old sod, you know. But it, it's that type of daft bits of humor but not silly bits of humor if you know what mm. i mean with it you get not to like go marvel, through it not marvel cinematic <laughs> type of where it's not uh, stop you, you, you know that it, it worked in the first few films it got all right uh thor ragnarok was one of my favorites i won't lie i've, I've watched quite a lot of them but it seems to have got all too quick because they're doing it all the time instead of just getting on with a good story yep Absolutely. At um, so. Guardians of the Galaxy, it worked, and then they started making more movies like that, and then Thor Ragnarok. I think overall, I didn't like it when I came out of the theater, and then I ended up watching it again, and I'm like, you know what? This might not be my favorite movie, and like objectively, there are some things that I think they really did wrong, but overall, yeah. it was probably one of the most entertaining. So now I got to decipher, you know, I got to separate good from just entertaining mm. and fun. And since that one worked, then they just threw the humor in it and it just killed. Uh, it's on purpose. I think it's all on purpose anyways. Well, but, the, um, the thing was, it, it was lightning in a bottle, if you know what I mean, Thor Ragnarok. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it, it worked. And you, you can't deny it worked because I, I'll still go back and watch it and enjoy it because the, the things do that too. were done were off the cuff. And then... And, uh, Agree with me or disagree with me on this one. It had gone too far for people to accept She-Hulk the way it was done, which is how it is in the comics, because that was as near to, you know, being in the comics with the fourth wall breaks and how she did. And it was like, well, it just doesn't work. You're stupid. You'd already gone past the point of no return. So when you did what you were supposed to do before the point of no return, it stopped working. You know, it was weird. And... I, I never watched Sea Hulk. I, I I was never into the comic or the character. Couldn't care less about it. But yeah, I I did know about the comic, and it did I, it did strike me that it seemed like they actually did kind of transfer over from the comic almost literally with all the humor 
and every and like you said, everyone just still bashed it. And it's like, I wonder if you're just think you're supposed to bash it now. Like, like, yeah, you know, it's it's I. It's kind of like the, the the Fantastic Four, like the original two Fantastic Four movies. Even the first one, it didn't yeah. do that. It didn't do that well. But if you read the comic, the comic's kind of corny and quirky, and it was a lot like the comic. I actually really enjoyed the Fantastic Four movies. Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't mind them to be told honest. They they were entertaining. Um, obviously, we've been a Hulk fan when the first. You know, Hulk film came out, and it was the Ang Lee one, which was basically a documentary. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it, I was happy to see the Hulk on screen yeah. when the first transformation. You know, the the, the one where he, he he did it in the house with Talbot, and yeah. basically threw him and did that. That for me worked, and it worked so well. Yeah. But then the film just. It, it, they had the wrong guy. They had the wrong guy doing yeah. it. And and I and honestly, I didn't. I recently read the Hulk series where that was taken from, and mm. I think Adam Kubert was was the artist, and um, it was it was a lot like that that uh, comic series that that iteration of the Hulk in comics because the Hulk yeah. has a billion different iterations in comics. They can't really yeah. figure out how to work them. He's a really tough character to write. And um, that movie, it's not what they wanted. It's not what I wanted. And this, and here's the funny thing. I think that that particular Hulk, the CGI, to this day, yeah. looks almost completely realistic. It's some of the yeah. best movement. It's some of the best CGI I have yet to see. And the second the, the, movie, which is it more of a little story, bit too. It was too ripped. It cartoony. The second movie, the second yeah. movie was gross. It was, he was, yeah, it was all sinewy and, but the story was more of what I wanted, but yeah. the Hulk was not. The Hulk's actually kind of gross to look at. I'm like, what, what were you thinking? And then, um, unfortunately he never got another movie of his own, but I think they nailed it, um, with the first, the, the first Avengers movie. I think he looked the best. I think he absolutely looked yeah. the best. That, that definitely in the first Avengers movie, he was more like, um, Oh, who's the artist after Herb Trimp that did Hulk? Because there, there was Herb Trimp that did it, and then it moved. Was it Buscema that did it? Was or, it Buscema? Was it I, I think Buscema? it was Buscema, yeah. With the nose that was open, the sort of scruffy hair. Yeah, and that's was, Buscema. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. Got, I've got some black and white Hulk magazines, and he's the yeah. artist. And, yeah. That one where it, it, Ruffalo's Hulk was sort of the Buscema. Buscema, yeah. that, that was it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think I think you absolutely nailed it. Really nailed yeah. it. Like um, I was so pleased, and I, I I actually called it. I was like, you know what? The first one, the the Hulk movie sucked, but the Hulk looked great. The second one, the movie was better, but the Hulk looked horrible. I said on the third yeah. try, they're gonna nail it, and they freaking did. Yeah. So it's it's you just say big big complex character, but that's that's the Hulk. That was my favorite thing about it. So. So did you actually collect the Hulk comics? Were you did you like? Oh the, yeah, the... yeah, yeah. I've, really? Okay. I've, I've got from issue three hundred, um, and some before. The majority of them Farley run. I've got all of um, what is it? Uh, Prue's, uh, Del Keown. There was a single Eric Larson in there. I've got that one, and then I got with Gary Frank took over from then. And I love Gary's work. Gary Frank yeah, is super. Yeah, he's, he's really he, good. He, he's impeccable on every page. Yeah. And then some do. Oh, I like to call a decent friend because I, I didn't. I haven't seen him in over ten. From um, America, and he's now living back in Derby, and that's Liam Shaw. Oh and yeah, then... yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's actually back on Medieval Spawn. I was like, that's yeah. freaking awesome, awesome. I love Liam's work. Uh, I saw him down at the, the comic convention uh, in Bristol and I stood there. He was in the middle of drawing something and I, uh, I talked about the, the Hulk page. I went, where's the one where it's the Hulk wearing a, a fin on his head? And everybody says, no, that's that's just the Hulk with a fin on his head because it was a Peter David sort of jibe towards Eric Larson's Savage Dragon. You mm. know what I mean? And Liam was drawing it. He says, he says oh, he says, I think I got rid of that one ages since. You know, that. Like, <laughs> Hello, you know, so yeah, it, it's, yeah. 
but he, I, I got the I got his run signed uh, by him on the cover, and then thoroughly geeked out because I went across the other side of the room and I got Alan Davis to sign me Excalibur comics and my oh, clandestine nice. ones. Nice. And Alan's an Alan's what an absolute gent. He's, he's so fine. good. Oh my god. Yeah, he's so good. Um, I liked I loved uh, I I love Sharp's um run at Wonder Woman. So beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. He's Liam's just got that work, and it's sort of like, yeah, I love his painted stuff as well. But uh, I, I'm a sucker for his black and white artwork. If yeah. if I had the money, I'd probably be bankrupt. But we'd I'd have all his black and white artwork. The, the house yep. would be worth yep. more in comic pages than anything else. Dude, I want to oh. I want to get like the artist the artist editions of like Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane. Um, yeah, the, the big oversized black and white like of all their artwork. Holy shit! I want that so bad. That'd be amazing. If uh, do you know uh, Staz Johnson's work? Stuart Staz Johnson. He's done Batman. He did Thor. Um, I don't know the name. If I saw the art, I might, but I don't know the name. Right. If if you if you write in Staz, it's just S T A Z uh, and then Johnson, and put Dracula, and look okay. at the black and white artwork on that. And Staz lives sort of like I think he's about 10, 10 maybe twelve miles away from me. Really? Uh, look, looks like looks like Slaz from Guns and Roses. You know, even at fifty odd, he's got the hair and it's still perfect perm. Um, yeah. But you look at his stuff and it's absolutely stunning. He wanted to do this full Dracula book in sort of like the big page version. You know, like the an old print sort of paper, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And bring that out, and it'd been like, oh wow. If you can get that published, I'm having a copy because he's mm. you just the, the artwork's stunning. He's um, got a, a very uh, Bissema sort of lean in his artwork as well as stars. Uh, that'd be something you, you've got to see. To I talk think like. I know who you're talking about. I do. I yeah. do think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he did Catwoman for a while as well. I think he did that. Those I've always really appreciated artists that their black and white work stands on its own. Like, yeah. and almost like you'd rather just see it not colored. Like David Finch is one of them. David Finch. Yes. The the black and white is just unbelievable. Um, Jim, I mean, they've all got different styles, but Liam, obviously there, there are some people where it's like the color, no matter how good the colorist is, it almost flattens the work where they're black yeah. and white. You're like, holy shit. I never even noticed this and this and this. So cool. That's why I've had a, a call for Mark Silvestri to do just a, a one-shot black and white Batman comic, just just black and white pens. Mark, yeah, sit there, yeah. do that. Yep, dude, he is. Does he just use? Does he use microns only, or does he use like Crowquill? Do you know? I couldn't tell you where Mark's concerned because, from what I can pick up, a lot of it seems like the fine liners and yeah. just a certain type of marker. Yep. That's what I think it is. But knowing Mark, he'll have a paintbrush somewhere or yeah, he'll have yeah. a, a, a ruling pen. You know what I mean? He'll, he'll have something, but it, it doesn't matter. As long as it's on paper and or card and it's it's done by Sylvester, it's usually beautiful. If you so. if you if you ever get the chance, you might already have it. Um I think it's I think it's the Marvel Essential uh Wolverine. And it, it, it's the mm. black and white on on, yeah. on 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 newsprint. Holy shit, dude. I love that's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite books that I have because Mark Silvestri's black and white work, bar none, in, it's impeccable, yeah. impeccable. He the way he can the way he can separate things using the cross hatching. There's so many yeah. different textures in there. Oh God, it's gorgeous! It's gorgeous. That was one of the things which I tried to sort out and learn with the with the depth of making things look 3D with the cross hatching, and uh, I, I managed to put it down on a few pieces and. Um, I've I, I I've got to find the image. I actually sent the piece because when Bernie Wrightson passed away, now if you if you're talking black and white, Bernie is the man that sits at, at, at yeah, top the yeah. top the hill. That's uh, the top, guy, think, top guy. Yeah, I think everybody would agree. But that the 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 lab scene where he threatens Frankenstein with the monsters threatening him, and you see all that done, and it is just black and white ink. Yeah, just just you're like wow. And I did a man thing piece. 
and I tried building up the rendering with just pencils to get it so it was um, it looked 3D mm. I think I managed to achieve it to a degree do you know what I mean but it took two days because it drove me insane because <laughs> I wanted to get the, the rendering just right so yeah, yeah it's, um, I, I, I can sit and do that but there's certain days when certain pages just don't require that amount of inking or that amount of detail they just need to to hit you if you know what yeah I mean, especially when you're doing like you know not that we are like a monthly book but when you're doing yeah. interior pages i i still <laughs> have, i still have trouble because i like you i like mcfarlane and stuff and when it's shrunken down you think that they're like this close to the paper but when you blow it up the lines aren't as close together so i yeah. still have a problem of adding too many lines too much detail and that's like one of the things that I'm working on now to tone myself down a little bit to make sure everything's readable and not just yeah. not just detail. Like detail, everyone loves detail, but the professionals can see where there needs to be some open space. Yeah. And that's what I'm working on right now with my art is how to properly get that open space and let it breathe. Like they say, they always say, let it breathe, you know? And I'm yeah. like, no, I got to fucking fill that in. It's driving me crazy. It, it's better when you don't. It's true. It's true. Is that one? That that was what Mark destroyed me on uh, on quite a lot of things when I was when I was there at San Diego because he, he just went. Mm, I think we're doing a bit of copying here, and he sort of went, "You like David's work, don't you?" And I was like, "Well, yeah, you know." And then he brought me back up because I was over rendering. You couldn't yeah. differentiate from the fore and the background. Yes. Which. You, you've got to either have it simple at front and detailed in the back or simple in the back and detailed at the front. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, I just, I actually, Sylvester is the one that I probably study the most when it comes to adding depth with just black. <coughs> and mm. I still can't do it like he can. Like it's, he's just a master of it, but yeah, all these little tips and tricks that when you're not in the industry, like side by side with the pros at the building, you know what I mean? You're not yeah. you're like you're you're at home trying to figure this shit out, and it takes ten times longer. You know. Yeah. It's so difficult. Well, that was the thing with Neil Adams, um, and I, I got a big loss. Uh, I know a lot of people have turned around and said that sometimes you. you he could be a little didn't... rough. Yeah, he it, it, it was. Heard, Do you know yeah. what? I I loved every minute of the the takedown they did on me with certain things. And he just gave me the most simple piece of advice. And do you know what made it more golden for me with that? Because he shook my hand and he went, I'll see you at the back of one of these tables in 12 months. That was from Neil Adams. That's awesome. And then a couple of years later, he was doing a live stream on um, Instagram. I think it was the year before he passed, actually. Um, and I just said, thank you. What you said helped me. It changed my artwork tenfold. So like every impact, when Liam had said something to me, when Mark had said something to me, it made me turn the corner, if you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. And he, he's, 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 uh, he, he actually spoke on the online. He said, he says, oh, I says um, was it Supercon? And I, I, I typed back in, obviously, because you can't speak to him directly. Yeah. I typed back in. I said, yeah, London Supercon, my wife was pregnant. And he went, you're the guy that believes the sword was better than the python. He says, I'm so glad it worked for you. What's the little boy's name? Oh. So I ended up telling him it was, you know, it was Colton incredible. like that. He says, well, I wish your wife, Trish, he remembered her name. How the hell? I'm That's... around people every day. I don't know who they are. I, I don't. <laughs> I, you know it's what? Unbelievable. It's Something like that just was an absolute privilege. That's old school. It's, that's like old school gentlemen. That's really cool. Yeah, and that's that's, really that's cool. what you, that's what I find a lot of artists in certain cases because I've met some people that have believed, and I I, I did at one point think I was like, oh, I'm awesome. Yeah, no, you know, me too. Yeah, come come back down here. Okay, sit. Just remember, if people buy your stuff, consider that the privilege. Mm. Always say thank you when they do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whether they like your stuff or not, please say thank you for buying it because you have to give them the understanding. If you show manners and respect to people, you, you're you never going to be in the wrong. And I know that sounds awful. And I'm sorry, it sounds a little bit, you know, like, mm, I'm showing you manners. I'm never, you aren't because you are trying to open up a, a, a common ground be, between you yeah. and somebody. 
Yeah. And I don't care whether you, you, you know, you're eight foot tall or three foot tall, black, white, green, yellow, whatever you want to class yourself as. Just, you know, that's awesome. as long as you, you keep your manners. <laughs> yeah. That's actually, um, Todd McFarlane has, has spoken quite a bit about, about that type of thing at conventions. And I mean, yeah. you know, he rubs a lot of people the wrong way. That's fine. He was one of my heroes growing up. Um, but he was always in almost every interview, he will talk about how like you're lucky if they buy your stuff. Like they, they, yeah. you're the ones that put food on my table. I need to be nice to you. I need to be, you know, yeah. um, he actually would, he, he actually would not eat or drink so that during the cons, he would never have to leave his seat. Yeah. So he would be there signing straight through the entire time. And some of that was his business way of, of thinking. And a lot of that was if I got a, if I got a, a guy that's been in line for three hours, who the hell am I to go take an hour lunch and then come back? He's like, I, I, he's like, I can't do that to him. So, I mean, it's, it, it really shows like, you know, yeah, maybe I'm sure he's got a huge ego, of course, but the thing is he still has that type of, those type of manners, that type yeah. of respect for, for, for the fans and everything else. I always thought that was really cool. It is. It is. That, that, that's, that's what you find about some, I'm not naming names, but there are a few artists that believe that the, well, their own crap doesn't sting. Yeah. And um, it's, no, the, the the guy that pays the 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 four ninety nine or the the fifteen pounds or the three hundred dollars or whatever it is for a page of work, a headshot, something like that. I I I did it at Bristol. Somebody asked for an image, and I I asked him, "Are you sure you're happy with it? Are you positive? You don't want me to change it?" I, I made sure that he had the option if he didn't like it to have something done again. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I know that can be time consuming, but at least he walked away happy and he said yeah. he was ecstatic with it. So I, you know, I got to that point. Uh, I'm just hoping and say with, with the, the campaign, which obviously I was supposed to talk about. Um, <laughs> we, with, we, we got to what we did. We were having fun yeah. though. No, with the, with the campaign, this, this was supposed to be the exclusive start of it. You know, you buy a piece of artwork, it's exclusive because it's not going to be this price again. Mm -hmm. it's going to be up here and also if you buy the artwork you're getting the book you're getting the digital copy you're getting two, some exclusive prints with it and it, it's that type of thing i wanted to give you something that you won't get again here yeah. because when it goes on general release there's certain pages that won't be in this um it won't have this wrap round cover and that'll be it you know like off it goes you won't get the exclusive prints because i'm not producing them again the T-shirts will go onto a website and be sold at a different price and you won't get an exclusive print with them or the book with them. Mm. So it's it's me trying to say, look, you know, catch me while I'm 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 trying to give you something because, you know, not being nasty, but my mortgage doesn't pay itself. Oh, yeah. This is the oh, big I thing. completely, dude, I completely understand. I really do. And I'd rather you walk away, turn around and go, I got that. When it, you know, I got that. Bloody hell, I got a deal there. Yeah. And then if... You know, if Trish shoots me, it probably doubles in value. So that's one thing. So that's that's just the way I think. Um, I spent, I think I spent too long, not chasing it, uh, but not giving up at it because there's a few times where I could just throw stuff on one side and go, nah, I'm not interested. And then I'll see something like a comic book. I mean, I got Nat Jones's uh, Eden's Wrath. Oh, it's nice. It's actually sat in fact. Sorry, excuse me. <sighs> excellent. Excellent. And it's, it's, yeah. again, <laughs> I love Nat's work from being on yeah. Spawn and stuff like yeah, that. And yeah. like, that's what that's exactly. I know. And I, I've, I've just, I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we've had to wait for these because there's been, you know, bits and pieces of things that he's had to sort out. And it's worth the wait. Always worth the wait. Can you show it to the camera again? Brittany's got you. Um, Brittany's got a nice closer. Let's see. Right there, you go. Trying to get the light. That's a nice. That's a nice gloss cover. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh wow! Excellent. Nice. So, 
yeah, I'm I'm well happy with that. Trisha's stolen the little parchment thing that I got in it, which was uh, it's just terrible. <laughs> terrible. Doc, Doc's in. Doc. Doc's in here. Doc is in. Ahoy! Hey, Doc. How are you? I'm good, Ron. How you doing, brother? Doing all right, man. Oh, Doc. Er, yeah, Pops is here. Doc. All right. I wasn't going to take your show over till eight o'clock. That's all right. Oh, I didn't mean to intrude. <laughs> Shit, I'm sorry. I'm sure. I'm sure Paul wouldn't mind getting to bed a few minutes early. You know. I mean, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. You know what I'm is that Paul fucking Roper? Yes, it is. It could be. It could be. <laughs> hey, no, Paul. Go many, I go by many an alias. How are we doing, Doc? Doing like, well, thank you. Doing well. Pops, thanks, we've thanks. already said our hellos. How's yep. the? Uh, how's life? It's it's life. It's life. It's that good, isn't it? It's that good. It's life. Yeah. But is it as we know it? That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to... Let me see if I can do this. Just as a bit of fun for you. You get to see a, a, one of the other pages that's in the back of the book. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I'm going to make that big. That's cool. Nice. I like that. Very cool. That's my my main villain in it, Khan, sat atop a thousand skull throne. So I'll, I'll let you figure that. that one out. And yes, that's nice. all pencils and ink. And in fact, the the black and white pencils are one of the perks that you can get. So cool. that page is in there. So I'm, like I said, when, I didn't want to cut you off in the middle of your presentation. Right, so if there was anything else you were covering, go by all means, go ahead. Don't let me get in the way of that. You weren't done. No, I'm I'm That's all about done, to be totally honest. <laughs> it's my <laughs> fault. I Doc screwed everything up. Done. Yes, Doc, how dare you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just, I, I couldn't help it. I just walked in the damn door. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, I, did, I did specify at 8 p.m. Easter, so right? <laughs> I can't tell time. You know better than that. <laughs> I did not even catch Keely up in there. When did that happen? Jeez. Keely's been here for a while. Yeah. How dare you? It's, it's hard to try and watch all the different places we're broadcasting to figure out where the comments are coming from. or You know what I mean? It's like that one got by me. What's up, Keely? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt when I realized I well, barged in in the middle of your stream. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me while I go out here and step in front of a bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy. Oh, man. No, but I... I I, I really appreciate you having me on as well. And it was nice to talk about some of the artwork and things. Yeah, it was. Man, yeah. The Fun My yeah. Comic. That that will be. I, I'm going to suggest that there will be another Fun My Comic with 21 Demons on it. Probably not this. this first, well, it might be the first issue, but it'll be the, the next book in the line. I'm going to do a lot of advertising over the next, what, four or five months at least. And. Um, yeah, I'm helping uh, a couple of the people out with their books as well. And uh, believe it or not, my little boy actually came up with an idea for a comic book. He reeled nice. off What's a that? full a full story of, you know, just... I, I can't believe he came out with it, eight-year-old. He was talking about these planets that grew life and technology and stuff like that and these things creatures coming and taking over the planet and then this technologically advanced section of it escaped and landed on earth and a, a boy found it and i'm like wow where Dude. did that come from Jeez, that's crazy. <laughs> so i sat there and he's just turned really eight and like, i can do this yeah come here there you <laughs> go. Go. that's how you know you're doing parenting right <sighs> Of course it is, and he's he's listening to all the correct music as well. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah, yeah. He, I forgot to put this one on there. Uh, you, you know the new Transformers film that's come out as well. The uh, the last one, Rise of the Beasts. Yes. 
Have you seen the bit where Bumblebee comes back to life and jumps out of the plane? I've seen it in like a clip, yeah. Right. There's a specific piece of music that comes on and he's now coming in and putting it on. And it's, it, I don't mind this, but it's uh, LL Cool J. Mama said, knock you out. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Today yeah. in, he's brilliant. And, um, and this, he puts that on or a bit of rock music, but he's also done something else which his dad used to listen to as well. He's now playing Cypress Hill, would you believe? Cypress and I'm, Hill, I'm, yeah. And they're no. going, can, That's can you? That's a good boy. It was like that. It's, it's uh, insane in the membrane. And I was like, yep. There's a bit of swearing in this. He went, oh, I don't listen to the swear words, Dad. I went, it's a good job. Mom would kill me. <laughs> Dude, Cypress Hill's the shit. So, yeah, he's, he's going back through Red Hot Chili Peppers, Cypress Hill, Rush, uh, Deep Purple, Jimi Hendrix. He's, he's listening to it all. and he's Eight years old. Unbelievable. And it, crazy. He's smart, but he, his ADHD drives him absolutely crazy at times because he just doesn't stop. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Keeps me let me ask you so, Paul. all my life. No. If I would tell him to listen to the Fly, Fly by Night album. Mm? If, let, let, if, if, if I've been res- listening to Rush all my life, and for somebody who's young to try and grasp what Neil's saying, there's only certain albums that I would recommend, but one of them would yeah. be Fly by Night. You know, well, I I uh, you, you said your son was ADHD. Let me ask you something. Has your has yeah. the, has the pediatrician ever suggested to you giving him small doses of coffee? No. Uh, do you know that the actual thing that was uh, – the, the pediatricians haven't said much about it. We've gone the diagnosis through school and that. But I've worked with kids with ADHD and uh, autism, learning difficulties, not only with just doing the martial arts but with artwork as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the energy drinks? Mm-hmm. They slow them down. Yeah, they set them down. If you there was a and, there was a teacher here in the states, special education, that specialized ADD ADHD, National Educator of the Year three years in a row. Yeah, uh, with parental permission, he was giving the kids a little bit of coffee in the morning and a little bit after recess lunch, and their their behavior improved, their grades improved, their concentration improves. It's a natural stimulant, which of course slows down ADD ADHD. So. Just a just something to think about, and uh, magnesium. I, I, magnesium. I can't speak to the magnesium. I can speak to the study that was on the on the caffeine stuff, and of course, you know the reason coffee is because it's purer than sugar drinks and energy drinks yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. But yeah, that, that, just something I, to think I, about, you know. Well, to be fair, he's doing uh, pretty well because we've got him into his BJJ with his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He seems to, you know, nice. like he'll go a little bit crazy for a while, but then he'll perform a perfect head triangle and you're like, <laughs> but he's, he's also coming and asking dad to ta- start teaching him with the, the stand up martial arts. I, I can do the grappling on the floor, but I'm, I'm lazy. I'll just give you a limb and say, yeah, go and have that. And I'll, I'll yeah, there, there you go. There you go. I, I, I was a, I was a more stand up and look down the pipe fighter. If you know what I mean, if you're mm-hmm. coming at me, you're coming at me. It's not, don't get me wrong, I, I have ultimate level of respect for everybody with the skills of grappling and stuff like that, especially if it's mm-hmm. it's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because there's so many different ways to get in and out of it. But mm-hmm. um, I've lived around old boxers, new boxers, mm-hmm. stand-up mm-hmm. fighters, Kyokushin, Muay Thai, Wing Chun, all that type of stuff. And I've been kicked up and down and I've given as good as I've got back and scared quite a few people that have been high places as well. Mm-hmm. Um so it's it, there's not a great deal of room to put somebody in an arm bar on a floor if you're out on the streets. Yeah, it's also twice as dangerous, in my opinion. Yeah, it's got so, it's got, a, it's got its yeah. place, but like you said, man, yeah. old, old fashioned brawl is a brawl. Yeah. Um, I got to pop out for just a little bit, pops. I'll be back, Romo and Paul. Forgive me again for intruding. I got to take care of some stuff, but I will be back. No problem. All right, Anytime nice seeing you again, Doc. All right, cheers. Right. All right. Well, I'm going to collect myself. And again, thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, really thanks appreciate for coming, it. man. Thanks. Oh, uh, uh, Brittany wants to know if you watch The Office, which one do you prefer, the UK or the American? Uh, oh. I've watched some of The Office, 
I'm, I'm a fan of both Carell and Ricky Gervais, okay. but I haven't watched all of it, so I can't make a definite thing. But I will say this. The British version of Shameless is far better than the American version yeah. of Shameless. I didn't know there was a British version. Holy shit. Where do you think the American version came from? Wow. I didn't know there was. A, wow. That's crazy. Okay. And specifically, all I'm going to say is, and leave this with my wife, her favorite film is Shaun of the Dead. Okay, yeah, Brittany, Brittany knows it. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Diamond Peggy's her favorite ginger, and that's the way she puts it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah, now, nice meeting you, and uh, yeah, you we'll too, catch buddy. up again. Pops, yep. sorry for not being in touch in a while, but life has taken hold, and it's one of those things. Just keep so. doing your thing. Let me know when you need something to be to get eyes on it, and we do what we do. Woo. Well, it's it, by hopefully the first it's funded, and then I'll be working on the next one for next year. So I'll be keeping everybody in the loop and messaging around and building the network back up again. <laughs> so. Always good to see you, man. All right, nice to see you guys. Thing, buddy. Thank you very much. All take you take care. care. Thank you. So yeah, um, Lorenzo says he likes the Office UK. He's only seen a little bit of the American one. Um, I never got into it. Fucking love the Office. Never love got the, into oh, the American, the American one. I love the Office. That's one of me and Brittany's. Just we'll just watch it straight through. Turn around, just watch it straight through again. Just, just, we don't like anything new. There's nothing good that's new. So we well, like no, I'm not saying there's anything good new. I'm saying I just couldn't get into that when it was new. Yeah. You yeah, know? I know, I know. I mean, I wasn't a Friends. I wasn't a fan of Friends. I wasn't a fan of Seinfeld. There's so many of these Seinfeld's shows that best. people loved, and I was like, Yeah, Seinfeld's the best. I, we love that. <laughs> I like, I like a lot more than Britney does. Like, I like all like Cheers, Night Court. Everybody loves Raymond. I love the sitcoms. I um, like Night Bernie Court. Cheers was Court. okay. I liked Night Court. Okay, um, I like that '70s show. I never liked that. Never See, I like that because somebody mom. wrote that about somebody was living in my neighborhood and wrote that shit about yeah. our house. Yeah, I had a basement room where all my friends came and hung out, and there was a side door that they could go in and out where they didn't have to come through the house. Right? Yeah, it was exact same setup, and it was That's like awesome. I had a I had a stepdad that was a red foreman type of foot in your ass kind of guy yeah and all these stoner friends that just constantly was up in on it on his nerves it's the same show okay i lived that shit yeah yeah right right <laughs> yeah sitting around the table getting high the whole thing okay the whole everything about that show was like somebody could have wrote it been sitting in my in my basement and wrote that shit yeah because it almost all takes care it almost all takes part you know, in the basement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I never it, got into that show. Uh, just you know, not not a lot of sitcoms that I that got my attention. I guess it takes more than a half hour to impress me. <laughs> yeah, no, I love. You I know loved, what I mean? I, Cosby, I loved all of them. I, I liked Mork and Mindy. That was yeah, hell yeah. Okay, but see, we got to go way back to get where yeah. people could actually do it. Like, I mean, come on, Robin Williams ad libs on that show were ridiculous. Yep. You know, you know they did. You know that script wasn't written. No. For no. him, you couldn't. You it, couldn't it was outlined him. for him. You and couldn't. He, keep he did it himself. Be impossible. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, they outlined it, and he went, "Okay, I'm going to say this and this and this and this and this." And yeah. It, it just come off the top of his head. I remember seeing him on uh, the Tonight Show. And he went on a roll, and you, Carson's just looking off to the side at the producer, going, "Yeah, you know," because I mean, he was like, "Can we even let him say some of the stuff he was saying?" Because it was Rob yeah. Williams; he didn't care, you know. It's yeah. like once he got on a roll, it was crazy. Um, and yeah, that '70s show. Well, that's what I mean. We were a bunch of teenage stoners, and that that show was just like who we were when you know when we were teenagers. Everybody, yeah. had, everybody had the car they were building for when they got their license. That was the great part. It's like a bunch of 14, 15 year old dudes, and we all already had cars, you know, in my, yeah. in the garage or whatever, just waiting to, to, just to, waiting to be license. driven. Yeah. You know, it was like crazy. 
But yeah, um, I guess we're here to talk about something else now. We, we, I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep you guys out here all night. So, well, let me, let me, because I got to, I got to go check on Clark. Let me have Brittany hop in. Okay. And she's going to continue. Okay. Okay. Come on in, babe. I really badly want to go get that grandpa tax on that candy upstairs, but there you go. I'm, I'm, you I'm, go, ha- I'm having to 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 hold back my urges. You know, there's a grandpa tax on Halloween candy. There you go. I'm, I'm, you, you you know that, right? There's a grandpa tax on Halloween candy. Oh, hang on, sorry. <laughs> grandpa tax. Grandpa tax on Halloween candy. Yeah. We are hitting up. Me and Clark are going to drive all around. To We got to go out of town just a little bit twice tomorrow. But we're going to all the different towns as uh, trunk or treat things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, A yeah. lot of them take place at the same time. But I think I've got a plan for us to schedule it. To <laughs> Hurry up. We got 15 me. minutes at this one. Run, run, run. We got another one to get to. We yeah. will. Well, he's back. <laughs> so we're going to be fast. <laughs> Yeah, they had the powder party at the school just now. Okay. And they got trunk or treat tomorrow, and you know, and then of course the neighborhood kids all like parade around this this hood. Oh yeah. All around the lake cool. area and everything, where all these rich people with lake houses live and shit. And kids, yeah. Kids all go clean up around, around. We go over to the uh, to the Richie Rich's neighborhoods on Halloween because that's where Ron's dad lives. So they have mm-hmm. there's a couple houses that do full bars. So yeah, I remember back in the day when you got everybody got full bars. Jeez, man, it was fun. Yeah, Look, um, yes, I, mean, I can't eat a lot of the candy anymore like I used to, but it's still fun to help them get the most out of it. It's a good time. Just- this this the number one benefit of of, of not having tea. <laughs> I, can eat any, I can eat all the candy I want. Not ruin. Not have to worry about ruining my teeth. Oh, <laughs> I have to worry about ruining my diabetes. Well, see, I don't have that. But um, Jolly Ranchers. When I was a kid, I was addicted to them, and I would bite them. And by the time I was fourteen, I had a mouthful of broken teeth. Oh, and I lived all my life with tooth pain, you know, oh, I mean, all pain. my life with tooth oh, pain. Man. And then when, when the opportunity presented itself to have them all yanked out for really cheap, take them. Hell yeah. Them. Hell yeah. I don't like dentures though. They feel stupid in my mouth. I don't like them. So I just adapted to not having teeth. It don't matter. But, you know, out of all the pains <laughs> that I've had to suffer, tooth pain is fucking up there, man. Ooh, like it is there. all yeah. encompassing. Not it's, okay. It's brain pain. It is. It's brain. It I is. mean, it. it you, you hurt so bad you can't think. You yep. know, and yep. I've had a lot of other kind of pain that just hurts. Okay, bad shit. That was bad. You it, know? Is. it is. Like, it you know, is. I one thing I say I never I never regret having pulled them all out. I haven't had yeah. since. Haven't had a toothache since. It's been. <laughs> my mom come to visit once. She's like, "Do you still eat corn on the cob without your teeth?" And I was like, "Yeah, it ain't yeah. pretty." <laughs> There's still bone under there. <laughs> Cartilage or bone is still tough enough. And oh, I. Steak, I still eat everything I ate before. Peanuts, okay, that's the one thing I hate. I can't eat no kind of nuts anymore. But everything else, you know, I smash nuts up. (laughs) Smash peanuts into a paste. And then I eat it. That's good. Now y'all know way too much about me. Let's get on with this. Um, We have this amazing campaign that we're working on for our Roku network. And look, people, this is just the way it is. We got stuff to do. Um, We we got work to do. We got 51 backers. We still got a long way to go. But there is so much cool stuff on this campaign for people. doesn't matter whether you run a show, 
doesn't matter if you're a sponsor or a, or a creator and looking for a little spot to drop an ad during you know during your campaign or whenever you need the ad played if you're a convention runner or store got a comic store don't matter all that stuff is available right um but there's a lot of stuff for fans and most of the people we help watch these shows are fans so when it gets down to it there's a whole lot of art there's a whole lot of pdfs there's you know a lot of cool stuff that's available on this campaign to help us build this network wherein we already have 35 shows and like 11 or 12 showrunners have signed up to bring their shows to the network so we're going to go to roku with a view on demand platform with 50 existing shows that's a lot of content we're not going in there with a once a week show okay we're going there and we're dropping 50 shows 50 different playlists most of them are, are playlists some of them are just new shows going forward but a lot of them have already previous content that they'll be putting up there we have a lot of stuff okay Probably 3,000 videos will be launched there on the first day on a view on demand platform, and all of them can be watched at any time. You can go through somebody's playlist, go, Oh, yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. You know, the one where Rich shaved his head on Monday Madness, or what, whatever you're looking for, the playlist will be there. You'll be able to find it in that playlist. Um, a lot of different shows, Romo shows, um, Doc's coffee shop the tuesday morning brew with Lori calcaterra the horror movie club with brian criscow look we got a lot of shows we got matt burke's uh, metal movies and brewskis we and and his open the gates uh, chuck dixon ask chuck dixon and what you're reading both of his shows show uh, replay on the network we'll be going to roku mike Barron's show the baron earl show shows on the network but on a simulcast, we'll be going to the Roku. Um, all this stuff is going to Roku, man. Um, I'm not saying these people won't be putting it on their YouTube too, but they're going to Roku for a reason. And, and part of that is, say what? Uh, other creators are able to join us, right? So if somebody wanted to join the madness and get their shit up on the Roku channel, it's not just limited to us in the madness now, right? No, it's every, it's this it's just like when I did the beta test in the beginning, and just like when I talked to you guys and said, Bring your show before we did this campaign, right? I talked to you guys three, four months ago, bring your show to the right. network. That offer was to everybody mm -hmm. to bring their shows to this network. It wasn't it it, it wasn't an exclusive group. It's still not an exclusive group. The more shows, the more ads, the bigger splash we make over there, the more chance that some of us who are not monetized can be monetized. Okay. I mean, immediately there's no there's no threshold for monetization. You don't have to have this many subscribers or that many watch hours before you get your cut of what you deserve for your content, which is actually more than YouTube pays. Because they only divvy up like three, three of this, three CFM out of twenty-two CFM out of twenty-two CFM, and Max says we're going to be much more like thirteen or fourteen CFM out of oh, our twenty wow. CFM, right? Okay, so we're not trying to take what you guys do. We're not trying to take your uh, your shows, your content, and, and make it exclusive to us, like. Twitch, if you're an affiliate, you can only do it here. No, we want you to yeah. be get as many eyes on what you do as mm -hmm. possible. That's the whole purpose of the network, the Facebook group. Everything I've done is to get more eyes on people, not, you know, squeeze it up where nobody can see you. Okay. Mm -hmm. The whole purpose of going to Roku is because it's a completely untapped audience. There ain't none of this over there. Speaking of cuts, too, so, like, anybody who donates and pledges and is here as an OG, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
Fletch. Ground floor, the ground floor yeah. people. Yeah. Like you'll get shout outs on credits for these shows and we'll, we'll give you the credit where the credit is due. And if you do donate, I think donation was the word I was thinking of anyway, donating to the, uh, the campaign is there's like so many things that you can get for your donation, like yeah. buy a PDF, buy an awesome piece of original, unique art that nobody else on the indie scene is going to have. Dude, I, I love the cards. Like right Those there, you got sketch so, cards. Obviously, Ron's doing some. Doc, Rich, uh, Dow from the Still Token Comics, and Christian Zaffel all doing sketch cards. And anybody who gets a sketch card gets a pre free PDF of their choice, and we got 37 to choose from. Which is really, really cool. And There's no other campaign is offering that much for the pledge. Like, I really don't think so. And the other the other thing, too, is um, uh, I keep forgetting the points I made because I'm just amazed at how much there is to choose from. Mm. And it's it's like you're not just going, OK, yeah, I'll support these guys. And you throw some money at the madness. You literally are getting something unique and awesome that nobody yes. else on the indie scene is getting. Look at this, like what Jeff offered the other day. Die a horrible death. So cool. He will draw you being killed however you wish to be killed for $50. Now, it's a digital, and he sends it to you so you can scan it or whatever, obviously. But look, guys, he's doing six of these, and he's doing this for the campaign to help us raise money to get the Roku up. Okay, all these guys donated this stuff to help us raise money to get the, the – the Roku up and running. <clears throat> Jeff ain't taking none of this money. It's all going toward the campaign. Joe Bachman did some wood, does wood burnings all the time. Now look, guys, even if you don't want some Christmas or Christmas ornaments like this, maybe you want a Christmas ornament personalized for yourself, hit him up and get something from him. Because Joe's pretty cool, man. He has the IndieCD.org, uh, uh, Indie Creator Directory. Good dude. Good dude, cares about what we're doing, always promoting. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Tony Bourne. Tony Bourne has been a guest on the Madness Draw Stream for the last couple months. He's the dude that draws with a pen. No pencils, no erasers, a pen. So badass. Oh, it is so badass watching him draw. He'd been hanging out with Rich and Doc and everybody on the draw stream on Sunday, and it's like, uh, this is a very limited edition full-color print of the Destroyer, and he donated it, told me to put a price of $40 on it, so that's what I did. Our boy Doc, Mr. Fine Art himself, our resident fine artist in the madness, right there, he's throwing up one of his actual paintings, guys. And Doc's paintings, I already know, because I've seen they go for thousands in 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 uh, galleries, you know. He's very very talented. He's, very he's throwing this skilled. stuff up there, and this was done like he saw it and painted it. It's Just amazing. like that's what he saw and painted. He's got a great eye. In that time, you know, like you, you see it. That's the time you see it, and then even though time's lapsing, as he still painted what he. Envisioned from the first viewing, right? Um, we have Jim O'Reilly, guys. Now, Jim O'Reilly dropped in here twice as well. Last year, Jim O'Reilly did this beautiful Crom Steranko homage. It's an homage to the Hulk, where Hulk's holding up the broken uh, title uh -huh. of him, right? Only that's Crom, guys. That's that's Jim's muscly Crom. Uh, <laughs> now, he did the pencils. And then scanned it and inked over it. This is the inks that I'm offering. I'm keeping the pencils. I'm sorry. Can't part with it. Uh, Jeff also has a violator. Jeff Bracey has a violator from Spawn. You know, uh, how many licks does it take? This is also a, a, an acrylic painting. And there's Jeff again. And then there's Jim O'Reilly again with the proof sketch. Artist proof sketch card. Uh, Lucasfilm's approved 
sketch card. And it is very rare, like, because it's the only one he has. And he donated it. Somebody get it. Somebody get some of this stuff, man. It's so cool, you know. Um, it is so cool. If you have a show and you want to bring it to the network and you just want to start at the first of the year going forward on Roku with no previous content uploaded, 25 bucks, guys, you're in. 25 bucks, you can be part of the network. Um, now, if you want extra content uploaded, the more content you want uploaded, the more it costs because that's Max actually having to work and I can let him, let him work for free. So that's that one part of that, uh, this, this, this pie chart up here, that one 10% right there that says developmental fee, that's actually Max's work to upload everybody's content, okay, and set up the campaign or set up the, the actual channel. That's what Max is doing, but I'm not letting him again do it for free. So he's getting 10%, right, of whatever we get, all right, 10% to go to Max for the work. Um, now, six different tiers for sponsorship. One month video, three month video, six month video, one year video. Um, you guys know sometimes you see our logo, our uh, our promo cards, and everybody's logos are all over them. We got a tier where if you want to do that, just stick your logo, and you don't want to do videos. We got us, we can put you up, put you on our banners on on the on the channel going across the bottom there, like we like we do, like we do, right? Hold up. The banner down there. That banner up there. See, okay. this broadcast is brought to you by. See that? We make banners for our sponsors. To people know who they are because we appreciate the people that make this happen. Um, same thing with you. If, if you add your logo, like the ones up on top, those are our current sponsors. Those logos are all over all of our promo cards. If, if that's all you want, just, you know, a little a little recognition during the show. We got that for you. Whatever you want, okay, we will do for you. If you're a sponsor and you don't see the tier that you would want or a showrunner and there's a tier that you, you would back it if, if it looked more like this, tell us. If it's something we agree with, we'll make the tier for you so you can back it, okay? Um, you seen something back here, something that you want? Tell me. We'll make the tier for it and you can get it. Uh, I'm not giving anything away, okay? But at the same time, if you help us build this thing, I'm gonna give you something. You're gonna get something in return. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just looking for good entertainment, there you go. Upon funding, Rich Parada is going to wax his chest live on the <laughs> Monday Madness. That's got to be something worth something just just to watch, guys. Ten bucks or something. Throw ten bucks at us just to see for that. Rich wax his chest. Now, if you don't understand how funny this actually could be, go back a couple weeks. Look at the look at Doc's Coffee Shop. Uh, two three weeks back when Rich waxed his back live, and you will see exactly how funny this is going to be. He's a noisy patient. He's a noisy patient. <laughs> It makes a lot of noise. A fuss. It makes it, a fuss over it. It was hilarious. It was yeah, good it was stuff. Good. Look, Rich is oh, a good sport. A He's a great sport. Um, shaved his head back when, when the first Incantessi got funded. You know, we came out. We did like a four-hour stream until we got it, enough funding for him to, to be funded. And then he shaved his head. It was great. What a guy. What a trooper. Um Myself, we got some stretch goals, too. This going away is one of them. All right? So, you know, uh, another one of the stretch goals happens to be the very first Crom Ash Cam by Doc Blaylock. Uh, art and story. And I'm not going to let him do it again, but a couple weeks ago, he actually blew the ending on that. Blurted the ending out, which he, we had never told anybody in over a year, right? And he just blurted it out on on, on a stream a couple weeks ago. It was like, Doc, what are you doing? It was on the drop stream? Did I miss it? Did I hear it? I don't remember what show, and I'm not going to tell you because uh, okay. I'd, I'd rather people. It was. It's a great ending, and it really was supposed to be a surprise for when people got it in their hand. Cause it's a great story. Doc's Doc's a good story writer, right? Um, and obviously you've seen his art. He was showing me some stuff today, some sketch cards. 
he showed me a, a Grand Moff Tarkin, a Peter Cushing. Just awesome. And then he showed me another one, and I was like, that looks like a cross between Tarkin and uh, with Christopher Lee. <laughs> what did that go? You said he was coming back. Yeah, I don't know. And oh, and I'm not, like you said, I'm not going to keep you guys out here like all long. It's curious. You know. Um, but we got friends that have campaigns. You guys know we got Carissa, we got Ginger and Pedro, Tanner Hurley, RJ, Dave Brink, our boy Club Corrupt, our boy Bill Moss. Look, Bill Moss donated uh, a tier of art that brought $500 to this campaign. Don't, don't disappoint the person who bought it and don't make what his donation um, um, a, a act of futility. Back this project, guys. Hell yeah. You know, um, also a little something, something for those people that don't know. Uh, that particular book right there, Club Chaos. Oh, yes. We have a crime appearance in Club Chaos, just for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. ah, Quit looking at her know. butt. Quit looking nice. at her butt and look at the sword. Yes, Crom is in the reflection. I found this sword before I saw her butt, but that's a good booty. <laughs> I love her boots. Yes, it's perfect. It is near etched by our boy Bill Moss, right? Very cool. Good job, Bill. All right, so I'm going to run through some of this real quick because I have it up here like this. Break Hell, Quint's Curse. This was the 50 reward, 50 backer reward. Everybody is going to get a PDF of break hell number one and break hell number two is funding right now on Kickstarter. So like next week we get funded, you read number one, you like it, and then you go back number two. All right. All right. That's how it is. Um, we got Jeff's violator, 150 bucks, my acrylic painting. We got signed by Mike Barron and Hart Fisher and donated by RJ Carter. The devil, you know, better short stories involving the devil. Number 13 of 25 limited edition. Yes, we got Bill Moss art, more Bill Moss art. This is white ink on black, a dragon. Bill don't draw too many dragons, yo. Bill draws a lot of Nira X, a lot of Zen, a lot of good stuff like that, but not too many dragons. This is kind of rare. Pretty cool. Not. Corey Barton, Kozor, Head Sketch. These all sold out on the Kozor campaign. This is the only one I know of that's available. Go get it. Some Jim O'Reilly Crom, some Jim O'Reilly Star Wars sketch cards by all our boys. Look, guys, come on. There's a lot of good stuff here, man. Um, if you're a friend of Drunk 3PO and, you, and you're a fan of what he does over there, Acromatic Chronicles Blue, he donated two copies to our campaign because he believes in what we're doing. Don't, don't make these guys... Um, Donations just like sit here in vain. Pick this stuff up, guys. Make these guys feel like what they're doing is helping too because they're trying to help. They're trying to help us build something. Um, give them some, some love for doing so. Christmas ornaments. What can I tell you? Maybe you can get them to personalize the back of them with your character or something. That's up between you and Joe, right? Um, Cindy. Cindy makes the little dragons, makes the big dragons, makes the crumbs. Come on, guys. Get them. There's not many of these. She even, she even made some glow and made me a glow in the dark one. Oh, that's great. Got some of that glow in the dark yarns. Made me a little glow in the dark crumb. Oh, yeah. Our boy Doc, look, if you want some real art on your wall, there you go. There you go. You get some of that real art, you know, the gallery kind, not the comic kind, real you art. know, them Southern boys. They like that real art, you know, <laughs> a lot of good stuff here, guys. A lot of great creators that are part of this. There's our boy Hojo with the mythicals. There's our boy Hex with Nephilim Squadron. RJ, I can't say enough about RJ Critical Blast. I've been a fan of what he's doing since first time I met him, told him a long time ago, you're going to get out that room. We're going to get you so much business. You're going to need a warehouse. Nice guy. Two. Two. Wow. All right. 
So you, you, you support your friends, you push them, you back them, you tell people what they do, and then other people get interested in it and they want to check it out too. And before you know it, they grow. They grow and they grow. It's word of mouth, still the best salesman on earth. You um, Talk about what each other's doing, support each other. It ain't a competition, it's co-opetition. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. not a competition. Who can sell more? Who's... You know, I mean, if you're friends, you get a couple of creators that are friends and you have a little friendly competition, that's cool. But that's still co-opetition because you're both talking about each other to your prospective fan bases. All Mm -hmm. right. And that's the whole thing. When you tell your fan base about that dude's stuff and he's telling his fan base about your stuff, you get some of that crossover customer action. Mm -hmm. Okay. So talk about each other, promote each other. Help us because that's what we do. Help us build this thing because that's what we do. All right. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to play the videos on the campaign on the way out. Okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, I guess you you could probably go ahead and check out if you'd like, Brittany. All right, buddy. Thanks. That was fun. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Doc. Thanks for popping in. You guys know what's up. Everybody in the chat. Thanks for being part of this, man. I'm going to play these videos and then I'm going to pop. Hey, yo, Pops Van Zant here. You know me from the Madness Comic Network on YouTube. Go check out our playlist over there and see everything that we are bringing to Roku. And then go check out the Roku campaign on Kickstarter. And grab you some original art, bring your show to the network, or drop an ad. We got stuff for everybody. Go check it out. Peace. I wish I could find a way to better advertise Apothic Press. Just back it up, man. Whoa, Crom, what are you doing here? What's this? The Madness Roku Network. Sponsorship. One month of playing your 30 second ad on the network. Three times a day? Oh my gosh, for $20? And you can't beat that. Just back it already. All right, all right, Crom. I'm doing it. Awesome. Hi, I'm Tanner Hurley, founder of Apothic Press. I back the Madness Roku Network, and so should you. Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan. Fans a lifelong comic fan, and recently promoter of independent comics. Look. You guys know what I do. I try to promote things. I try to get stuff seen. But this is for the fans. We're building something for you. Are building something new on Roku. For independent comic creators, for fans, for sponsors. Available on this campaign are dozens of PDFs of independent comic creators and their digital comics. 37 as of now available and all of them break down into their specific publisher. You can get We also have available original art in the form of five different artists doing sketch cards. 
We have Rich Parada, Ron Moskowski, Dow. Man, this is some good stuff. Christian Zaffo and our own Doc Blaylock are each doing four sketch cards for $25 each. We also have a few physical, actual physical rewards that you can get. Uh, a couple of them being Jay David. You guys know him as Drunk 3PO. His book, At Chromatic Chronicles Blue. He donated two copies, count them two, signed for the campaign that you can get $35. Also, we have our boy RJ from Critical Blast. You love him, guys. He also donated a book, The Devil You Know Better, signed by Hart Fisher and Mike Barron, number 13 of 25. Check. We also have two different t-shirts. We got one with the logo on the back and a sheriff's badge on the front. We got one with the logo on the front. Just whatever you like. We're here for you. And you guys remember from the Cromniverse campaign, the little crochet crumbs, the little crochet crumbs that Cindy Kep did. She's offering to do five more. Check it out. Help us out. Help us out. Get this Roku campaign up and running. Get this Roku network up and running. And we will help you out by giving you some cool stuff. Stuff, man. Everybody loves stuff. Comic Books for Kids provides comic books to kids in hospitals and cancer centers across the U.S. It's a place where we can all work together to make sure every child has a comic book. 100% of all proceeds go towards the kids. It's about making a difference, and while they're in the hospital, allowing them to fly like a superhero, battle dragons, or rescue teddy bears. We are in every state in the country and now support over 160 hospitals. Every month, we add more. Visit cb4k.org.